people call these combinations. We're going to start with standard stuff. Uh, but I call them switches. And we're going to go over a number of switches uh, to start off today. Uh, if you watch boxing, I don't, my kids don't watch boxing too much, but the knockouts don't come with the first punch, right? It's usually one, two, three, four, you know, and then you see one hit. And it's the same thing in judo. You don't just go tearing into Osotogari because normally you get slammed. So you got to have a series of techniques that you put together in combinations. In other words, we're going to switch from one throw to another. Now I'm going to show you how to train that just briefly. We all know Osotogari, so let's start uh, simple. Okay? We, we do all know that. Everybody's got their belt ranks, so I, I think everybody's seen Osotogari. I take a collar grip because I'm a little bit taller than this opponent right now. If I were shorter, I would grab him a lapel so I could get up under his chin. But for me, that's difficult because I'm a little bit taller in this case. So I grab the collar, keep my elbow down. I step to the side. I pull the opponent off into me slightly. Okay? So I'm right here, and this is the way I would do my uchikomi for Osoto. I'm just sweeping, coming back. Okay? But what we're going to do is a little bit different. We all know how to do uchikomis. We're going to get it moving here in a little bit. But I'm going to count on my, my partner, my training partner, to help me. I want him to give me a realistic reaction. So I'm going to do two regular uchikomi. One, two. On three, he's going to step back to avoid it. So he steps back. I'm going to plant my foot and turn to the side right here. All right? That's fairly easy. Um, actually, that one's a little harder than if I go one, two, he leans into me or leans on this shoulder to stop the Osoto, and I turn to make my Sasai. That'd probably be easier to start with, okay? So it doesn't even have to be a real pronounced reaction. Just moderate. So one, two, and then on three, I fake. Osoto turned to Sasai. All right? Now, let's look at that last one in case some of us don't know it. You notice my hands are almost like a steering wheel. And with the gi, you can just change your, your grip. Just twist your hand around so that you can push with it. This is real weak. Okay? I can't get anything out of this. So when I'm ready to switch, to the Sasai Tsurukomiyashi, the foot stop sweep. I'm stepping forward, I turn my hand, okay, so that I can push, or I just let go and push up under the elbow. This hand, unlike your other judo throws, you're gonna pull straight down, and it's just like turning one of the wheels to an old bus, okay? I'm just turning a wheel. And if I just did that, he would step over my foot. Okay, so I'm going to pull down with this hand, and I'm going to prop his ankle right here, see? So I'm going one, two, here it goes, three, like that, and then you cover him, you follow him up for the hold down, okay? Why don't we try it, guys? Let's try it, then we'll come back in and look at it and see the problems we're having. Then I'll show you that first one I did, a little bit different. Go ahead, same one. Uh, I'm going to show your instructors a little variation and uh, we'll go from there. So this time, Mike, some people will step backwards when you're coming in for Osoto. A lot of people escape that way. You have several options, but I'm going to stick with the same foot stop throw for now, and then later we'll talk about OG areas of possibilities. There's several possibilities, but those are two. So I commend one. Two, then he steps back. Oh, he's back. So I'm going to plant this foot and then step to here, which creates a lot of momentum. A whole lot of momentum that way. So if I notice that that's how my partner's stepping out of my Osoto, well, later in the fight, I'm going to follow up this with some one, two, here he comes. So I'm going to, I can't reach it, so I plant that foot quickly and use it to step right into society. All right? And 
that particular movement creates all kind of momentum, right? I tell people, I use this illustration a lot. If I have an old tire, and I want to see how far I can throw it down a, a track or a football field, right? I'm going to measure it. I don't go, this will land right there, right? But if I get some momentum and throw the tire, it goes way down there. And it's the same thing with a human being. So I want to create that circular motion, that momentum. Everybody knows what momentum is, right? It's like, uh, like swinging them real fast, all right? That's what we're trying to do. So one more time. And again, this is probably right now for brown belt above, but I don't want to limit you. Some of you may be judo geniuses, and uh, they can hit it right now. Uh, if not, that first way is very effective. In fact, I use the first version much more often than I use this one. I use this one when I run into an opponent that's stepping way back on me. All right? So anyway, here we'll do the second one again. So one, two, here we go. He steps back. I plant the foot, make my turn. There you go. All right? Let's try. Okay, let's try. Tell him he's going to throw a brick one. So one, two, three, just like you did. Don't change anything. One, two, and go. That's better than I'm doing, so tell me if you don't mind, I'll have you show this the rest of the day. Very good. Give her a hand. That was beautiful. And I want to talk about something that she did that not everybody's doing. She's swinging. She's using that circular motion on the third repetition. She's swinging them around using momentum, right? And not everybody's doing that. Some of, some are going one. Two, and then they stop, and then they try to yank with their arms. That isn't how it's done. So here's what I want. And we should probably divide this into an A group and a B group. We'll have the young ones go first. Yeah, but I just want you to swing your opponent around. Swing your partner around and around, right? So we're gonna be up here, swing. Okay, then he'll swing me, okay? He swings, right? I swing him, okay? He swings. Me around, okay? <laughs> Just like that. So let's have young ones out first. Get your partner. I don't want you to throw. I just want you swinging them around and around. And pulling here. But you notice that I move this gi quite a bit. Eight inches a foot. I move the gi, but he's still standing there on his heels. So I like to make sure I've got a tight grip here. Or if you're a collar, if you're a lapel gripper, grip up a little higher so that you move him right away. You're not just stepping and pulling the gi, okay? Because I'm not interested in the gi, I want to throw him, okay? Later we'll talk about other ways of gripping him real tight, hugging him here, and you can really turn the guy with a grip like that. So, that's number one. Number two, uh, some of the young ones over here, as you switch to the, the foot stop throw, a lot of people are going here and then trying to pull. That isn't it. You need that momentum. You need to swing them around real hard. So like this. So one, two, here we go. Swing. See, I make that strong swing to pull him around, okay? So swing him around real hard. All right? Uh, other things. This hand. As I step to turn, I either turn the knee so I can push up under his elbow, or I just let go. I can push under his armpit, I can push under his elbow. Then it's like a steering wheel. This hand pulls down, this one pushes, and I turn, and I make the throw. All right? Try again. We won't spend too much time on this next one, but go ahead and do some other, uh, go straight down the hole now, okay? And go. One, two, get ready, Brooklyn, and three. I go straight. That's beautiful. That's what it's going to be right there. I haven't been going down on top of uh, my partner, Mike, because, uh, you know, we have squash all over the mat. You know, we're not going to do that. Uh, but that's exactly what we want to do in a contest. If you throw and you hesitate, you know, the guy gets up, goes, gets a drink of water, and comes back and beats you up. No, we want to finish it. When you throw the guy, cover him right away. I saw it, I saw you do that also. It's well done. That's exactly.
exactly what one would do. You thought you were just losing your balance. You were on it, and that's exactly what it should be. The only time you see throws being done from a standing position without going down with your partner is generally when there's a big mismatch. Like, I'm a lot better than the guy, so I can throw and just stand up without squashing the person in Randori or something. But honestly, when you're up against tough guys, you almost always have to follow them up, clear straight to the mat. Okay?